listening to the Humans vs. Retirement podcast with financial planner and retirement specialist, Dan Haylett. In this podcast, Dan explores ways to help you overcome the behavioural, emotional and financial challenges of life after work. Join Dan for the journey where he will explore how our wonderful human brain will naturally fight against what it takes to live a happy, healthy and wealthy retirement. Dan will draw on years of expertise, experience and expert guests to solve the behavioural, emotional and financial challenges of life after work. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Humans Versus Retirement podcast. I'm your host, Dan Haylett. And today's show is a super, super special one as it's another real retirement journey as I get to sit down once again and chat with my wonderful client, Neil Jones. Neil, a very warm welcome and thank you for coming on and sharing your story on the Humans versus Retirement podcast. Thank you, Dan. Very, uh, very pleased to be here uh, and, and chat things through with you. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Can't wait to have the conversation. And um I'm really, really looking forward to bringing out some of the conversations that I know that we've had over the last uh, 18 months or so in, in, in your journey. So um, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Neil, Neil, I'd love for you, I think more so than any other podcast episodes that I record, um, I think your background, your story is vital um, as, as kind of the build up to your decision making around your retirement. So I'd love for you to tell the listeners a bit about you your career, and ultimately when you first started to think about retirement? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, my, my career, I, 35 years, I, I've, I've had a, a very rewarding career. I started off as a, a software developer in the uh, defence industry, um, and I spent nine years um, in that in that role. I had, had some wonderful projects to, uh, to work on, for the Air Force, the Navy, and the Army, um, for all boys' own stuff, actually, uh, some of it. Um, and uh, after that sort of nine, yeah, nine or ten years, I thought to myself, you know, is, is there something else that can challenge me, you know, and uh, see what I could achieve? And um, I was lucky enough to um, change roles there. I worked uh, then, moved to the uh, City of London in the finance world, and I had five and a half years um, in a in, in a quite an eye-opening uh, role, I, had, I think actually I had five roles in, or seven roles or in the five years or so I was there. And it really sort of stretched me, challenged me, um, and I got, I got a lot from that. And um, during that, that time, I met uh, uh, one of my old colleagues, a um, good friend of mine. He, he said, look, we, we're effectively working in a startup company do you want to come and join us um fairly sort of fairly you know only a year in or so um and, and i really fancied that challenge as well working for a for a fairly new company um setting out you know um on, on that sort of journey was was very exciting so I, I moved into that and i actually stayed there for uh almost 20 years until till i sort of decided to take my retirement and and uh, i've been retired just over six weeks now um, but that journey was uh, was really special to me, and it was it predominantly in the in the technology world um, and, and uh, running sort of a technology operations department for many years. Um, and because we were a fairly young company, I took on other roles as well as we uh, as we as I spent my time there. Um, and it was all all very sort of challenging, and innovative, and uh, very very fulfilling. But I guess uh, you know, in answer to you know your, your question around when I started thinking about it, it, it wasn't so much thinking about oh, I want to retire. It was more about could I could I have the the resources and the the, the desire and the ambition to do something different without having to have that financial burden, if you like, of mortgages and, and all the rest of it. So it, it was probably in my early 40s, I, you know, my, my wife would sort of tease me, she teases me about this, she's thinking about this so, so so soon. But actually, it was then I was thought, you know, I would like to see what, if I could have the opportunity to retire early, then I, I'd like to take it. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to to save as much as I can into my pension and kind of keep my fingers crossed, really. That was my strategy. So that was sort of over 15 years ago now, really, when I originally started to have that ambition, that desire to to explore a new lifestyle um, if I had the opportunity. Um, I certainly wanted to give myself the opportunity if I could. Um, so that was the mindset I, I had at the time. And then really thought thought nothing more of it for, for a number of years as I as I 
carried on in in my role. But I, I guess the early seeds were sown then when I thought to myself, there must be more to life than sitting behind a desk, really, um, if I was working for someone else. Um, and, and, you know, what what other things do I like doing that I would love to do before I'm I'm too old to do them? So, um, so that was really the the uh, summary of the journey I've been on during my career. Thank you so much for sharing that, Neil. I, I think it's such an important point that you've made, and 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 actually one of the real pleasures in working with yourself and Claire was that your your mindset w- was um, an attitude was developed early. You, you know, going into your forties and thinking about and being intentional about planning for the next 10 or 15 years to allow you to have that degree of independence and choice and freedom was really evident for me early on when I started to have those conversations with you. Um, because, because because with some people, it's a bit like pulling teeth, right? They've never thought about it. And it's really difficult to open those channels of yeah. conversation and communication. But you guys had evidently talked about it and thought about it. And, and that was crystal clear. And I think it's a really interesting lesson for people to learn that um, and to hear that if we're starting, if, if we're thinking about retirement, it doesn't mean that you think about it two years before your 60th birthday. This stuff can be yeah. really thought about um, reasonably early on, 40s and early 50s, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there were kind of things that, you know, when you sort of think about, when you start thinking about it, what, what mattered to me was initially to have um, a vision of what retirement would be like for me. You know, what what would, you know, how would I how would I spend my my time? What would what would a typical week look like? And uh, what would a typical week look like in the winter versus the summer, for example? Because they're, they're very different experiences, as as everyone knows. Um, so it was thinking through, you know, what would my week look like, and and how would that week dovetail with with Claire's, who who is still working, um, and. Um, you know, there are other considerations to take into account. It's not just about this is what I want to do. I want to do this hobby or not. It's actually living living a normal life, that things you do normally that, that, that do consist of household activities and chores and things. Everything needs, you know, dog needs walking and all that sort of thing. Build build all of that into your to your vision as you as you think through what it would be like. Mm. Yes, and that really helped me with. Um, the the identity uh, problem where you know you have this um v- view that you're at a dinner party or something and someone asks you what do you do well actually because i've got a um a fulfilling variety of things i'm doing whether they're mundane or not it, it doesn't worry me what people are going to think about what i what i call myself and so by being by picturing what what my days were like during the um during the sort of preparation phase, if you like, I never worried about that question. I never worried about having to answer that. So, um, you know, that was that was um, a key part of, of my, my preparation, really, along with, you know, speaking to other right, retirees. Um, I did a lot of reading, obviously listening to your podcast has, has been part of that, um, because I wanted to be aware of the pitfalls, the potential pitfalls to look out for. Um, you know, and I'm very aware that I'm still in the honeymoon period. So, you know, anything can happen still. Um, but I think that that sort of preparation stage where you're sort of educating yourself about who you are, what you want to do, um, and understanding other people's um, views on it as well is, is usually uh, interesting as much as anything um, and inspiring in a lot of cases. So, you know, that just sort of kept me going to, to think this is really really what I want to do and so it was a slow build up into yes this this is definitely for me um and part of that thinking as well was um visually uh, visualizing uh, what an unfulfilling retirement would be for me you know what would be disappointing what would what would I be you know ashamed of if you like um because I've got this such wonderful opportunity to take to take retirement early what would I you know what would it look like if I if I if it went horribly wrong and that that gives me a sort of thought to spur me on so I don't want that to happen that is not going to happen um and uh, part of it is, is knowing knowing who you are in a lot of cases so that that was a key thing you know uh, to think about um and and know you knowing myself you know what, what do I what do I need um to make all that work um very much down to having a bit of structure to my life 
Um, certainly, you know, my wife and I, we've, we've uh, sat down on weekends and looked at her diary of commitments, looked at what I'd like to try and get done and what, I, what do I want to do and sort of dovetail in my activities with, um, with her, her commitments as well. And having that structure on a weekly basis um, and the freedom to, just to decide which, which do I want to do this week or what, what do I want to, to wait for the next week for. And having that, having that sort of uh, view of it all has, has really helped uh, tremendously uh, in my preparation, uh, as well as, you know, part of knowing yourself is um, what is it that you'd miss from work? Um, and it's the camaraderie that you get from work that uh, is, is something I knew I'd miss. And so I'm very, very heavily involved in my local cricket club. Um, and, you know, taken on to the treasurer role there and I had to expand it this year to, to help the wider committee. And I've, that's, that's helped me tremendously to be part of a, a wider team still. So it's helped with that transition. But, I, you know, the preparation stage, uh, as I said, was, um, was full of those kinds of thoughts. And knowing that I needed, you know, that sort of team, team element to, to my retirement, um, I'm very happy to sort of kept it going and, uh, you know, it's been very important to me. I think that there's a couple of really amazing points I just want to pull out on there. I think um, I talk a lot about, uh, re, re, you know, observing other people's retirements and both in a positive and negative fashion. I think it's really important to look at people that have retired, whether they're friends or family, uh, and step back and, and think, what have they done well and what have they not done so well? You know, what, what, what would I, what bits would I like to take out of this and, and live and what bits do I want to avoid? And I think that that's a really, really useful exercise that I know you went through. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's massively important. I also think um, the, the, the visioning that you've done over the last 12 months, 18 months particularly, but obviously it happened a long time before that, is, is so important. We talk a lot about this thing that you're retiring to and not from. And I know we've had that, you know, a number of those conversations and, and you've absolutely, you know, put a vision in place about what you're retiring to, knowing that that vision is somewhat flexible and, and, and changes as and when things move forward. So again, another key part of it. And then thirdly, um, I think this is about, again, looking at all of those non-financial elements that you that work provide us and having a way of replicating some of those in in some way or fashion and you're you're kind of you know itch to um to 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 monitor and uh run a spreadsheet near which i know is something you love mm. to do has um ha, is being solved by being a treasurer of you know the cricket club right <laughs> you, you you you're doing something that Very you love true. to do you know, and but but again, those you know, the organisation of that, the camaraderie of being around a team, um, you know, being part of something, continuing to build and support, it's something you've done all your career, and just to let go of that is is a dangerous thing. So, you, you know, you, you're you're replacing those things, um, you, the non financial elements of work with other things, which is which is which is amazing and and so important. Yeah, no, I think um, as well as you know the, when you when you think through the, the the preparation stage, all of those things I've sort of uh, touched on there. There's still the final the final point at which you have to decide I'm going to do it, and and that was an interesting sort of uh, journey to go on because you know yes, you can do all the preparation in the world, but you know what is it actually that's that's stopping you from then just doing it? And um, sort of looking back and, and thinking about it, you know there were there were kind of it, 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 Worked out there were four, four, four criteria that I that um, I needed, and one was um, you know financial confidence to have no regrets, you know, because you can carry on, carry on um, working, and then you realise actually after long time after you return, I could have gone sooner. I've wasted those years, so that's a massive regret. The other regret, of course, is not doing enough doing enough due diligence and actually going too soon, and then having to. To scramble around when you're much older to to try and find what, what you need to live on. Um, so if you didn't do the due diligence, that would leave you with a massive regret as well. So you know, it's ultimately there are no, as you know, there are no guarantees in life. But you have to have enough confidence to to uh, to go ahead with it. So that that was certainly one of the key criteria I I needed to have, and, uh, and Claire too. You know, it was it was very important to both of us. Um, Obviously, you know, the second criteria is that that preparation work that you go through has to all be 
you know, done and dusted and uh, in the right place. Um, the third thing, I just needed the support of Claire and my, and my wider family. Um, I couldn't have done it without uh, taking, you know, speaking to them and, and getting them on board and understanding what I wanted to do. Um, that was really important. And then the final thing, which sort of struck me probably quite later on in the process, was being ready and able to break that emotional link with my company. Um, you know, I've been there, as I said, for 19 and a half years, um, fully emotionally invested in all of that time. So what would break it? Um, and, and really, it, come, it came, came down to the feeling that actually I've done, I've done all I can. Um, I've, I've had various roles. My role changed in the last couple of years, um, and I, I looked. I tried to look ahead uh, beyond beyond where I am now, and thinking, you know, what I, I just don't think I can do any more for the company, and that was ultimately the 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 final uh, link really that needed to be put together to allow me to uh, take the decision. Um, so it's it's interesting, you know. You can do all the preparation in the world, but there's still that final "go on then do it" um, over the edge <laughs> uh, type. Press the button on the on the email to to um, you know send your notice period. So Absolutely. yeah, so that was uh, it was quite a journey. Well, I, I mean, as you know, Neil, I, I I love my golf, and I think it, the analogy I like to use is that. You know, and I've played in some competitions where I've had a caddy and you look at on the tour and on telly, they've got caddies, right? You can do, you can stand over a shot with 150 yards into the green. You can have all yeah. of the dialogue. You can have a look at the wind. You can see the slope. You can have a look at the lie of the ball. At some point, you've got to pick the club up and hit the ball, haven't you? At some point, yeah. you've got all the exactly. information that you need and you've got to yeah. execute the thing. Um, and so absolutely, I think, you know, that the, the, the I think no matter how much due diligence you do, and, and obviously you know that we've done quite a bit on this, but no matter how much you do, there is still always going to be a leap of faith with that with that sending of the email, with the button being pushed, et cetera. And I think it's just having having the confidence and comfort that you've done all you can um, to, to to press that button. And, I, and so I think it's a wonderful, uh, and those three or four points that you made, again, I, I've said before on the podcast, go back, re re rewind the podcast and listen to those three or four points because they are so important when, um, when when the listeners out there are thinking about planning their retirement. I think, it, you know, coming from someone who's lived and breathed this really, really recently, I think it's such an important uh, three or four points to to, to pick out. Um, you know, I'm curious, the, the process from kind of, you know, thinking about stepping back to then going through that due diligence and realizing that actually this was now, you know, reality, you could step back. Um, and, and that process, what, what was that moment like for you? The moment, I suppose two things, the moment of realizing that actually all that work that I've put in over the last 35 years has come to a point when I can do this. And then the moment where you actually did send the email and have the conversation, what was that like and how did you feel? Uh, yeah, I, I think that sum it up in one word. It, it was liberating. It was truly liberating. Firstly, you know, I've been keeping, as you mentioned earlier, spreadsheets of what I thought I could do, but I didn't have the uh, the, the, the confidence to, to say, well, can I rely on rely on my my own knowledge and um once you have it you know you play it out with um with yourself Dan, as a professional in this world you know it gives you actually you know what i've not been stupid um i, I can do this and to have that played back to you is um, a very very liberating experience and um it was it was a, i called it freedom day actually i think i probably mentioned yep. it to you yeah. during our discussions yeah. you know i think when when could i have the opportunity to say you know, I, I've had enough and can go at any time and do my do what I want to do, what my wife wants to do. Um, so that that was the the main feeling. You know, uh, it gave me you know um, such sort of confidence and and real empowering. You know that uh, I'm in in control of my own destiny um, as, as opposed to you know constantly having to to think of what others need from me. Um, and that that was that was the feeling really. I love that. You've said that word to me a lot, and I think it's um, yeah, it's such a it's such a heartwarming word, isn't it? I think that you know, liberating, understanding that you've done all the right things, 
validation yeah. that you've done all the right things. I think it, you know, it's just it's just a wonderful um, it's it's a, it's a wonderful uh, finish line and start line, isn't it? It's kind of at the end of yeah. that bit, the start line of the next. It's it's, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful place you got to. Yeah, and I think it, it, it's underpinned by that faith that you know I will have no regrets. W- w- whatever happens, if you know if we, disaster happens, we do run out of money in in twenty years' time, fifteen years' time, whatever it is. I just know that nevertheless we did the right thing at the right time, and that's what I'll be able to live with. It's easier to say it now, of course, before it actually happens, but that will certainly be one thing I won't be dwelling on. I won't be thinking that. Well, think oh i made a made a terrible mistake i've done the right thing at the right time and that's that's all that anyone can do in their life um but what i did not want to do was to waste the years um you know that uh while i I still can do things that i want to do um and that would have been the tragedy so yeah couldn't agree more you couldn't agree more. Um, we've we've mentioned the wonderful Claire a number of times in the podcast. Now I'm I'm really curious to uh, get your take on this because I've done some episodes on the podcast about the challenges of um, making sure that as a couple discussions have been had and this is a joint journey and stuff. Well, how important was it for you mm. to ensure that Claire was a big part of these conversations? Um, uh, around planning your retirement together and that she fully understood, as well as your kids, f- as you've mentioned before, family, yeah. um, fully understood, you know, a- as much as um, they want to, uh, you know, what's going on and 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 um, and kind of what that vision is. Yeah, I mean, it, it, for me, it's uh, absolutely crucial. Uh, uh, probably the best way to describe it, imagine, imagine if we hadn't included Claire in our conversations, and I'd made these decisions on my own, um, and you know she's still working. And there were times when you know she'll have bad days. She'll be wondering, you know, I'm doing all of this. What what's he doing? Um, you know, why can't you know? Why didn't we talk it through? And what if what if we run out of money or we or whatever it is, whatever worry she might have, if she'd not been on that journey and had the opportunity to ask all of those questions, it wouldn't take long. I'm sure, before tensions would would creep in to our relationship because, you know, I've been a decision maker that's, that's excluded her from, from probably one of the biggest decisions you can make as a couple. Um, so it was almost obvious that she had to, be, to we had to do it together. You know, there, there was no real thought of, of it not being done with her. So, um, you know, that, that that's the, probably the, the best way I can... I can describe it, and and fortunately, it's it's mean that she she's been excited for me. She's been with me whilst I've gone through, you know, all of this sort of preparation. Um, she's asked all the right questions as well of me as and of you um, to get her comfortable, and she was excited as I was when I when I finished. Um, and I got home that that day actually because uh, I was just over six weeks ago to balloons and cakes and banners everywhere, an excited dog. You know, um, it was a real lovely you know, welcoming um, that I got that I got when I when I finished. And she was able to share all of that that with me. And um, you know, that that it means the world really. Uh, and we're sort of embarking on the, the next phase together. We're we're still finding our way a little bit. Um, you know, as I say, she's still working and she will do for the foreseeable future. Um, but we've we're able to sort of share more leisure time already together. Um, walk the dog, go for a few pub lunches, you know, during the week and things like that. Um, and it's uh, it's it's fantastic to know that she's she's on my side with it. Um, so I would yeah. uh, I feel that's one of my top things to, to say. Uh, really. Yeah, I think a, a couple of points just to draw out of that that um, you know I think it, it's not um, untypical that one of um, what one of the what one of the husband or wife is still working right or wants to continue to work you know the retirement dates very rarely match in at the same time so i don't know claire's very passionate about the work that she does um you know and and wants to continue to you know do that work even though that you know and and i'm not trying to put words in your mouth but even though i think you she feels that you've both um 
got to financial freedom. So, you know, I think she's mm. definitely doing it from a point of view that her work is m- much more than earning. It's a it's a vocation and she loves doing it. And she knows that, you know, that that you can plan your time together. I think that was a big part of the conversations that, that we had. It was her want to continue to work um, throughout this as, as well. So I think that is a you know, a really yeah. key part of it because every, you know, each individual person's journey is very different. Yeah, and I think that's, that's an important point you've made there, Dan, because it was important to her, you know, because if she felt that she was suddenly the sole breadwinner, let, let's say that for an example, you know, that she's she's the the, the earning one, um, you know, if she'd not been on this, you know, preparation journey with us, then that, that feeling would would persist for for a long time and so i think um you know knowing that she doesn't necessarily have to be the, the earning it, it's made a huge difference to her you know that she knows that she can enjoy enjoy her work and um what whatever she can can bring in is is can go towards the, the fine things in life and um, we're very lucky to be in that position very very lucky indeed um but again it comes down to if you've got that opportunity then you know you've got you don't explore it because it, they don't mm. come around very often. Yeah, and, and a point on that is that it's a it's a it's a it's a lovely you know her work is very meaningful, but it's a lovely play check for the both of you, isn't it? And and actually you 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 said um, you know it, it's it's not necessary it's not necess- it's not a necessity to the success of your planning and retirement, but it's it's a lovely byproduct of being paid for work that you love doing. Um, yeah. and also what, you know, another thing that you said, which I want to drag out, which I think is hugely important. Um, you said something like walking the dog and having pub lunches. I think the lesson that I've learned in working with retirees over many years has been that it, it's the simple things and the time spent doing the simple things that seems to mean and matter the most. It's not the you know, grandeur holidays and traveling, you know, just the ability to go and have a lovely pub lunch with no worry about having to check your emails or get back in, get back to do things to, you know, to, to walk the dog with freedom, to explore a little bit, um, seems to be the things that brings some of the most joy and happiness. Yeah. And I think when you go through that visualization uh, process, it's not about, oh, I've always wanted to visit so and so place or i've always wanted it. it's it is the the day-to-day um week-to-week type living that i, I would mm. say is you know what what i visualized um yes yeah, so we've got a bucket list we'd love to go on holidays we've got about half a dozen places in the next 10 years we'd like to uh, go and see of course but that's not what i was visualizing um it, it was the it, you know was was those simple things that uh, that just fill up your time and to do it to do it at, at your own pace um, to your own schedule um, that's that's really what I what I mean when when I say visualization fantastic love that big key point to take away um, on that um, I, I want to change uh, direction slightly and and just understand from you and that, that there doesn't have to be an answer to this so to speak but um, what 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 have been the biggest challenges for you over the last say couple of years when it comes to the process of thinking and stepping back and and living retirement in the last kind of yeah. six months or so? Yeah, so I guess the biggest challenge was self doubt. Um, you know how how do I gain the confidence to to make that decision? Um, so you know that during the pro the preparation stage that that I mentioned, it was all about trying to banish that eventually um and and so so that was that was that was a challenge you know can i have i have i got the resources i need um who you know i really didn't know for sure and so that that self-doubt was was a key challenge and i i would suggest that probably more recently since i've left and as i as i was approaching my my leaving date actually i knew the challenge would be leaving all of my you know, I've got some lovely friends and colleagues at work, leaving them behind. Because, um, uh, you know, you, you, live, you spend most of your time, don't you, with your working colleagues more than your family. And, you know, you get to know them so well and their, their day-to-day lives and what they did at the weekend and all of that sort of thing. That that general day-to-day banter or whether it's um, conversations or deep, meaningful, you know, friendships you have there and 
all of those sort of things. I, I worry about missing that. Um, but, you know, um, I'm still probably coming coming to terms with that, if I'm honest. It's only been just over six weeks. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing as many of them again as possible. Um, it's social events and things like that and keeping in touch with uh, a number of them. So, you know, that I've got... Um, it's been it's been a challenge to get my head around that, but I've got uh, I've got some plans in place to make sure that that's a softer landing, shall we say? Um, yeah. So they're, they're they're the main two challenges I would say that I've mm. been through. Um, you mentioned it's been six weeks or so, and um, what what I mean, and I've received a couple of very uh, lovely, heartwarming photos from you about some of the stuff that you you've actually been doing and i know you've had some you know you had some pretty short term goals that you wanted to do around your wonderful boat that you own um but what, what what's it been like in that 6 weeks since you, since you left what are, what what are some of the things that you've done and what, yeah so we, we have taken obviously t- taken a, taken a couple of uh, of breaks of you know pleasure breaks which is good but actually the the day to day um the, the weeks if you like um, have been actually hard work physically for me because I've I've taken on some of, a lot of those projects that just don't get done around the house or the garden for, for many years, and so and I've been doing a lot more exercise, uh, not just walking the dog more, but um, you know sort of doing more sort of attended Pilates classes, and that's been quite <laughs> quite. Oh my quite god, I've I've done a few yeah. of those. It is the hardest yeah. work in the world. This. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still can't touch my toes, but uh, no. you know I'm still, you'll get there. Those kind of things. So, um, yeah, so phys- physical hard work. But on the other hand, um, again, I'm, I'm young enough to be able to still sort of, sort of do that. And I don't think there's any age really, but you can't say so you can't try these things. Um, but as a result, you see, I've had I've had my my sleep has been so much better, really good quality sleep as a result of, of, of sort of being outdoors a lot and, and lots of exercise. And um, I've also sort of uh, taken up more more cooking, uh, particularly learning new recipes. That's been the uh, that's actually been the, probably the biggest stress I've had uh, in the last six weeks, uh, getting the recipe right and getting it delivered on time for everyone. Um, but we've had some, some, some yeah, interesting new meals that I've, I've learned um, how to do. What's, so, what's the favourite one, Neil? What's, what's the most favourite one? Uh, I've got a uh, – it's a, a crock pot chicken, um, which yeah. is um, it's, it's fantastic. It's uh, – it, it, yeah, I'll show you the recipe, Dan. But it's uh, it, it, it's you, you you cook it for four or five hours, and and it's wonderfully right. tender. And uh, it's it's been a revelation to um to, to try and try these new things. So really, that that's what I've been doing. Visited friendly Brilliant. a little bit more, um, and things like that. So uh, yeah, it's been good. Fantastic, brilliant. I think, and again, like like we said before, this is this is. Uh, you know, new skills being learned that's contributing to health and well-being as well. I, I, the episode um, that, that's just been released with Phil Perlman, who specialises in kind of health and well-being, uh, and we talked extensively around you know healthy eating and actually an ability to learn how to cook healthy and eat healthy when you've got time. I think such an important thing. So um, you know, embracing mm-hmm. physical activity. Um, and just, you know, generally, as you said, and there was an episode with Frances Taylor on sleep, and she talked exactly about what you said, you know, being outdoors, being physically active, um, it it contributes to really good sleep, which then compounds to better days, better mindset, more sharp, more, you know, and and it just compounds up. So it's, it's just so cool to hear that. Yeah, it does work. I mean, I, I'm still very aware that I'm in this honeymoon period, uh, you know. Um, Absolutely. So, so it'll be, I, th- I think the main thing, though, is I'm aware of it. I'm aware that it's a honeymoon period. So, you know, going mm-hmm. back to what I was originally saying of being aware, aware of the potential pitfalls in the future, um, I think it's important to continuously have new ideas uh, about how you want to fill your time. So don't stop visualising, um, you know, continue to do so. And I'm thinking of sort of a few online courses in the winter, um, I've got a, a saxophone that I had for Christmas last year. Um, and I'm going to start, you know, in the winter months when I'm at home, I'm going to try and teach myself that. I, I play the clarinet. I'm hoping that it won't be too bad a transition. Um, but those kinds of things, visualising, again, you know, new things all the time um, is uh, is the way forward. And I'd say you can keep the exercise going as well, uh, even when you can't go outdoors. Uh, 
you know, Pilates is, is fantastic for that as well. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully long may it continue, yeah. but we'll see. <laughs> No, but I think I think I think it's really important for you to bring that up, Neil, because I think you know it's you know off quite often uh, you know the honeymoon period is the right language, but those first you know you, you you use the word liberated and you've got energy and you've got gusto and you're going at it and you're trying new things and that you know and typically those first number of months often do end up being really nice and really cool and but. But there is going to be a dip, right? The reality is there will absolutely be a dip. The reality is that you will absolutely have a bit of self-doubt creep back in. Um, The reality is that, you know, that you'll wonder about at some point potentially going, um, you know, do, 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 do do I go back to work? That's often something that comes into people. And, you know, how do I use that? I'm not saying that's that's what you'll do. But so I think, you know, as you rightly said, all the preparation in the world can do it, but we do know that it's going to be a journey. And that constant explora- exploration of new ideas, new challenges, new visions, this isn't a build a vision for retirement, push the button in no, retirement, right. e- execute yeah. execute vision happily ever after. Yeah. It's that yeah. constant making sure that things are, are revisited. And that attitude is going it, it, to pay dividends. Yeah, well, I think that's crucial. It's just, you know, you've got to obviously continuously look at um, or every six months or so check your financial plan. But why wouldn't you also look look at your lifestyle uh, in, in the same way? Um, it's all part and parcel, isn't it, of the same thing? So, yeah, keep thinking of those those new ideas. Uh, and Claire's certainly got quite a few up her sleeve for uh, yep. for me to keep keep my eye on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this can be a, a one word answer. It can be a very short answer. But what are you what are you enjoying the most? Ooh, um time to think um plan my own schedule um and not to be phased if if plans change you know if it doesn't get done this week well, I'll do it next week then instead and that's that's that freedom that mind well, what's the word mind freedom if you like <laughs> to be yeah, able to yeah. think like that and, and approach life like that has been the most enjoyable thing it doesn't matter what I, what I'm doing everything I'm doing is has a, has a purpose and uh, I feel a sense of achievement, whether it's uh, t- like tidying out my shed or mowing the lawn or, or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, there's a sense of achievement there. And um, but having the mind, the mindset to be able to say, it doesn't matter if I don't do this tomorrow or, or right where it's raining, I can't do that. Never mind. Let's see when, when I can do it then. That, that's been the most enjoyable part of my, my early days. Fantastic. Anything you're, um, enjoying the least, if that's the right word. Not enjoying. Um, no, not 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 particularly. I, th- I think I'd have more material to work on if I had been retired a bit longer, Dan. But uh, yeah, yeah, so far, so far, nothing really. Um, Wonderful. You know, uh, re- really okay so far. Good. And 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 I suppose you know, looking forward, what what are you you know thinking of the next? 12 months, two years, what are you looking forward to the most? I think um, in the shorter term, um, seeing some of my old friends and colleagues again, um, when we when we meet up, we'll meet up in a few months' time. That's the sort of the, uh, the short term sort of what, what I'd like to do, C- continue with that link to my, to my old world. Um, but I've got some very dear friends that I'm keeping in touch with. Um, I think long, longer term, I... I, I it's funny. I, I, I've probably gone through my career not not thinking longer term, really. Apart from when I was thinking about could I could I retire early. But in terms of what I actually do, you know, I never really had more than a sort of a year or two's time frame um, in my career. You know, I didn't sit down and say I want to, I want to be at this level by in five years' time, or this is how I want my career to progress. It, it, I just took each day as it came, um, and, and I'm probably the same mindset. Uh, now, uh, as I as I've entered retirement, I'm not necessarily having goals that I want to uh, achieve by a certain time frame, or, or you know, having or in two years' time, I want it. I want to have done this, that, the other. Um, it's it's more about um, hoping that I have contentment. I think is probably the best ambition I, I would say I have. Um, and contentment is not necessarily being happy all the time, of course, um, but it's a general feeling that, you know, you can still face life's challenges and you can take pleasure in the things you like doing as much as possible and that you're loved and supported by your friends and family. Um, and that for me is contentment. So I think, you know, any longer term 
plan and future expectation it would be it would be to aim for that and hope I, that i i achieve that i love the word contentment and my very good friend brian portnoy who was episode five of of the podcast and wrote a wonderful book called the Drometry of wealth has talked about life's meaning is around funding contentment and and all of brian's work around the you know the 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 behaviors and psychology around money has led him to coin that phrase funded contentment how do we fund our contentment and funding doesn't mean a money thing it's kind of how do we do it through money and time and intention um yeah and so i love the fact that you've mentioned that because i think it's that seems to be the most fulfilling part of it funding your contentment yeah yeah i, I think that's best, the best way of describing it yeah amazing i'm curious to for you to share um and and, and it, you may recap on what you've already said a little bit here but you know coming from your learning and experience of planning your retirement executing the retirement living the, the the last number of of weeks in retirement what would you what would be your i'm going to ask you for top three it can be one or two um, but top tips for the listeners when it comes to their retirement yeah i, I think probably I've, I've probably mentioned this a few times so far but it's having no, that clear it. vision of, of what will you what will you do with your time and it's not about thinking about you know, certain uh, holidays or whatever. It's, it's just the, the day-to-day living. What does that look like? And picture that, as I said, I think earlier, you know, what does the winter look like? What does the summer look like? Um, I think that's uh, that would be something I'd, I'd, I'd recommend uh, to, to, to your listeners. Um, the second one we mentioned as well, but make, make sure your, your wife, husband, partner is fully involved in the, in the, in the conversations, in the preparation work, um, there's plenty of time for them to to get on board and, and aim to have them as excited as you uh, as part of the process. Um, and I guess the third tip, um, not we've not touched on, is um, uh, I don't think it's healthy checking the value of your pension funds at all <laughs> until it comes to the six monthly um, planning cycle um, where you sort of you can can take stock at that point because you know I can I could see myself you know if I tried to do that every every day at the moment it would be pretty depressing so I don't want that to, to spoil what I've uh, you know what I'm doing so uh, that would be the third tip don't don't look at this you know your funds <laughs> for a, uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis yeah yeah I, I, and I think it comes back actually to some of the core financial planning scenarios that we do and, and we've been through with you with you and Claire, you know, you, you do have to kind of be a bit worst case scenario with some of this. You kind of go, well, if valuations hit this, then you're still mm. okay. So kind of giving you the comfort around some of the downside stuff means that hopefully people can um, wean themselves off uh, checking their portfolios because they know that yeah. there is a an element of buffer to sitting in there because actually some of the numbers work and the financial planning work that has been done has been around coming up with those scenarios and worst case scenarios and making sure that when they do happen, when the market's full, when valuations are off 10%, not if, that's the key language because that will happen, um, then panic stations don't kick in and we know exactly um, where we stand and, and why we continue to move forward. Yeah, and that's still very, very important part of the preparation of course because you, you need to know that you have the that 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 confidence to to not have to check everything every day you know yeah. that, what, what's yeah. the point of that that's no living is it so no. um, yeah just put that to one side um and just deal with it and and you know do it in the right way every every six months you know if it's if it's not looking good you have that robust conversation and you you, you cut your cloth accordingly um but but don't ruin the six months leading up to it <laughs> By Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Neil, as we wrap up, is there, is there anything that I've not asked or covered that you'd love to talk about and, and share? I'm just wondering whether, you know, what, what, I think you asked me actually uh, whether I had a measure for what a successful retirement would be. Um, and it's just to reiterate that point that, you know, um, for, for me, it's all, all about if I can look back and say I'm contented, then, uh, 
then that's successful for me. Um, I don't have any sort of other measures, you know, how many holidays I've been on or what this, that and the other. It's it's just that that feeling, fo- focusing on the emotional well-being um, and, and, uh, and obviously health as well. You know, um, that comes into it. You're content if you're healthy. Um, and it, that, that's the most important thing for me. I think the key the key point there is that contentment comes in all shapes and sizes. But in my experience, as I said before, contentment actually is it is it is at its greatest with the simple things that you know that yeah. that feels like it's it's that um, you know what they call those intrinsic motivators. It's the the things that make us happy inside, not the things that we do by or. Um, or, 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 or kind of show off to to the world. It's you know, it's the things that we use that gives us joy that we do, and and most of the time, those things are, are are things that are pretty simple for us to to execute to achieve, and actually don't cost a huge amount of money. No, no, that's right, Neil. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the show, for sharing your journey. Um, it, it's it's not often that I think people planning their retirement have the opportunity to hear and learn from someone who has lived it, gone through it. Um, I think I talk a lot about having people to look up to or mentors or people to share their story because it's it's such a, a you know an emotional journey. Um, and, and one that people don't talk about that much. So I know that the listeners are going to take so much away from your insights and your wisdom. So I really want to say thank you for uh, for coming on and, and sharing everything with us. Uh, you're, you're very welcome, Dan. It's uh, been, been a really, really good journey. And um, I hope that uh, people find it um, yeah, interesting and inspiring um, and also you know, raise, raise any questions that... Uh, they may not have thought of before. Um, that was certainly valuable to me when I was listening to and speaking to other retirees. I got so much from their experiences and, and what they do. If I can give anything back, then then that's fantastic. But thank you for having me. It's been a yeah, an emotional journey. Thank you. <laughs> it's been brilliant. Thanks to say thanks for thanks for sharing. And this is just the start line, right? So uh, met, met many many more conversations and, and experiences to have. So. You know, as I said, I know it's going to add so much value. So thank you so much. And and all that leaves me to say is a massive thank you once again for uh, joining me on the Humans Versus Retirement podcast. Until next time, take care. Thank you for listening to the Humans Versus Retirement podcast. Subscribe to be notified when new episodes become available. We would love to have you along for the journey. If you like what you heard, then we would appreciate you taking a few minutes to leave us a review. And lastly, if you want to explore your retirement plans further, download our free seven-step retirement GPS toolkit linked in the show notes. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of TFP or Dan Haylett. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice So please always seek the advice of professionals with any questions you may have regarding your retirement.